Hello, everyone. In this video, I want to show you how to use the decision tree in Intellect of Statistics. Uh, we have some layperson questions up top and a static tree below, which has uh, some different tests to the right. I just want to kind of review very quickly um, a few things. So levels of measurement, there's basically three types. Uh, there's nominal, which is Latin for name only, male, female, Republican, Democrat, independent. There's ordered variables. For example, cola could be small of eight ounces, medium of 12 ounces, and maybe the super gulp of, of you know, 64 ounces. They're definitely ordered, but there's not an equal interval between the eight and 12 ounces and between the 12 and the 64. Uh, similarly, horse racing you could have a horse come in first, second, third. Horse comes in first, finishes the finish, comes over the finish line. Second comes in a second later, and maybe the third comes in two minutes later. Again, they're well ordered, but the interval or distance between those um, first, second, and third are different. Scale variables we consider to be ratio or interval. Uh, that is equal intervals between the different points. So someone between ages two and three had the same amount or distance in days than someone between 30 and 31. And typically uh, Likert type items, one to five or one to seven are also considered scale. The other quick things to mention are uh, dependent, independent, and covariates. Uh, dependent variables, really this is typically the variable of interest. It's our outcome variable and its variation is purported to be uh, dependent upon other variables. Uh, independent variables, this is something that we're looking to see if there's differences on some dependent variable by some independent variable, and it's thought not to have uh, variation uh, dependent upon other variables, like gender, for example. Covariates are a variable that we just kind of want to control and neutralize the effect of that variable. So I may want to look at um, you know differences on some knowledge by gender, but I want to, you know, control for age or something of that sort. So with that said, let's get back to our decision tree. Let's just go through a few of these here. So I want to summarize my data. You'll be doing descriptive statistics. I'll go back uh, to explore differences between groups. So for example, are there differences on knowledge by gender? So uh, do I have more than one dependent variable? Nope, just, just knowledge, okay. Any covariates? Nope. Uh, more than one independent variable? Nope. And does my independent variable have more than two levels? Well, in my example, uh, I'm just looking at knowledge by gender, so it does not. And here I'll be doing a t-test or a Mann-Whitney. Let's go ahead and predict an outcome. And then our outcome variable, or also called the criterion variable, can be scale, nominal, or ordinal. If I select scale, I'll be doing a linear regression. OK, let's look at examine relationships between my variables. Let's say I want to examine the relationship between knowledge one and knowledge two. All right. And let's imagine that they're all scale. I'll be doing a correlation there. And for this last one, um, let's examine uh, differences over time. So say we have a pretest, post-test, and a follow-up on knowledge, and we want to see if there are differences along those different time points. So uh, I have one dependent variable measured at multiple times. Yeah, I have knowledge measured at pre, post, and follow-up. Are they divided into groups? In my example, no. Any covariates? Nope. And my dependent variable is measured at three or more time points. Yes. Pre-test, post-test, and follow-up. And here I'll be doing a repeated measures ANOVA or the non-parametric Friedman test. I invite you to play around with these and see if you can go down different branches of the tree. And uh, that's how you use decision trees and intellectus. Thanks for watching.